I'm Eric. Um, I live in Salford, Manchester, uh, Greater Manchester, and um, I'm a self-employed um, water and wastewater engineer, often working in Africa. I started working on the house in 2007. Um, it was, uh, well I bought the house then, uh, and it was quite dark and dingy and uh, damp. So part of the reasons why I did, did do it actually was to, I didn't want to live in a house which was dark, dingy and damp. Um, but in addition to that I, I was quite environmentally conscious. Yeah, the reason I chose to do one thing rather than the other, for example solid wall insulation or ventilation, was based on uh, research that I'd done on the internet. For example, um, a very good resource was the Energy Saving Trust website where they got some good documents to download on, on various aspects. Um, but also I got some books and read, did some research myself and found out what I should be doing, um, which I thought was more to concentrate on the fabric of the building, the, uh, the walls and the floors and the insulation, rather than going for more um, glamorous um, uh, uh, renewable new renewable technologies or uh, solar panels and things like that. One of the things I've done was to insulate the solid walls of the house. Um, I didn't insulate the walls um, joined to the neighbours' houses, only the walls, uh, the external facing walls. So that's the front of the house, the street and the, and the one at the back alley. But I've insulated inside with about um, well, about 70 millimeter of um, solid insulation that I have uh, friction fitted in between uh, a wooden stud work frame that I attached to the wall and then on top of that I put uh, a vapour barrier and some plasterboard to finish it off and then plastered to finish it. I've installed a ventilation system in the house, an MVHR unit that stands for mechanical ventilation with heat recovery which basically takes air from the outside uh, which is clean air and delivers it to the rooms like the downstairs lounge and the bedrooms uh, at the same time it extracts um, air from the kitchen and bathroom and uh, there's a unit in the loft that exchanges the heat, recovers the heat um, from the air that's going out so you get quite a lot of heat coming back in uh, so you don't lose the heat uh, that you have in the house. MVHR is a way of controlling uh, the drafts in a house. Um, normally in, a, in an unventilated house you would have uh, drafts that would just move freely through whatever openings you have between the house and the outside, um, whereas with a mechanically uh, mechanical ventilation system um, that is controlled. So a part of the whole thing is that you've got to get a very airtight house. You've got to seal up all of those old leaks, and then you can you can control the drafts and recover the heat from that. I would say the main benefit of MVHR is that it allowed me to do the air tightness and the insulation um, without. Uh, without ventilation I wouldn't have been able to do that properly um, but also uh, an, an added benefit which I realized having done it is that the air remains quite fresh but also the humidity is is quite low it's some it sort of varies between 35 to 60 percent hum relative humidity but that's very good it's not too damp and it's uh, it, it's 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 comfortable I fitted the unit with difficulty I think uh, uh, because it was quite difficult to actually find uh, someone to help me fit it. I, had, I hadn't fitted one myself before. The unit came with a lot of, it came as part of a kit with lots of little um, fittings that they didn't fit into each other. Um, so that, and it came with no manual and no instructions uh, except what I could find one manual on the internet, but nothing how to fit the thing together. Um, so that was really one, one difficult thing I had with uh, trying to fit it. Um, another thing I found later was that there was a little bit of heat loss in, I actually measured the temperature of the air coming in the, in the pipe coming from the bathroom and kitchen to the unit uh, and there was some air loss in the, um, in the pipe in the loft and that was I think because air was leaking in um, at the joints where I used tape, this foil tape, but it had come undone. So basically I had to go back there and glue the joints and re-tape them. But, um, that is a difficult part as well when you're um, taping, taping joints in a dusty environment. Yeah, there were some parts that were quite difficult to fit. Um, the pipe, for example, coming from the kitchen uh, extraction point via the bathroom. Uh, it had to go through, basically through the floorboards under the bathroom and out into the hallway and up the, uh, the side of the wall before getting to the loft. Um, and that was quite a challenge to do that. Um, so we had to use 
a combination of um, circular fittings and rectangular fittings to do that. And then to um, sort of make a, uh, a frame of wood just around it so that we could plasterboard it and, and disguise it. Um, and retrofitting that into an existing house is quite uh, a challenge. Um, but we managed in the end. When I was almost finished with the work on the house, um, I got someone around to do a blower door test to find out how leaky the house was. Uh, and if, I, if there were some places which I hadn't plugged, managed to plug up yet as part of the air tightness routine. Um, so that was very useful uh, and it showed some, some major uh, gaps in, my, uh, in, the, in the building envelope which I managed to plug after the test was done. I got a lot of satisfaction doing the work myself, um, the DIY element, um, and actually ending up with a house that's very comfortable to live in.